Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. What I do know is that this is 4F Beauty. And this is a discussion about the dreaded hard pan. And I'm not talking X-rated here. So if you want to find out more about what hard pan is and ways around it, and then my darlings, as I've said for some time now, and here echoed across many other channels. Grab a drink. Grab a snack. Put your feet up. And enjoy. Here it comes. No fade. Because, clearly, it's not a tutorial today. I thought I would grab one of my Jeffree Skin Frosts out. This one is Princess Cut. Which I really like. But, it does suffer with a hard pan. I'm trying to get you to see this is quite difficult. Can you see? Maybe it will show better if I show it in the mirror. Yeah, right. Can you see the way that parts of the top of this have gone very glassy compared to the outside edges? And they then become very difficult. to pick up product on. So, what is hard pan? Well, to understand that you need to know a little bit about how makeup is made. Uh, you will normally see hard pan. Sorry, I had a collection of lipstick just there and it was fidgeting me. And rather than keep licking my lips and looking like a soft core. <clears throat> anyway, when you make a pressed pigment, you normally have some kind of element in it that binds it together and holds it together. Now, if you're repressing a pigment, you tend to use um, like the 90% alcohol. But it's not the because the alcohol evaporates, so it doesn't change the consistency of the product. It just reanimates the, the glue that's inside it to hold it back together again. And in most cases, the glue that holds it together is some kind of oil or a greasy type pigment so I think um, coconut oil or something some similar kind of residue beeswax or similar that will hold the product together now when we use makeup brushes on our skin obviously it picks up oils from our skin it picks up oils from our foundation, from our primers, from the moisturiser, from the SPF that you've put on. And it all starts to accumulate on the brush. Not that you can see it. And then every time you put that brush back into the product, you're transferring the oils back onto the top. And what eventually happens is that the top of the product seals over giving you this glassy effect just here and effectively stopping you from picking any pigment up now 
the old school or traditional way of dealing with that is to get some scotch tape and to stick the tape onto the area that has the hard pan and really push it in some cases I know a lot of people use the end of a brush to really push the scotch tape onto the surface and then when you peel the scotch tape off it brings off the very top layer if I stick that on the back of my hand now and peel it off I don't know if you can see, you probably can't actually, but it's it's bought off. Let's see if I reduce some of the brightness on one of the lights this side. Yeah, you can see there it's actually bought off the top layer of the pigment. And you can go back in with the end of it if you've missed a bit. And just do that all over the top and it will leave you with something that looks like this but it then means when you put your brush in it you can pick up pigment again now that's one way of doing it the way that I prefer, and which will also work with, I mean, for example, I've got this. Let me just wipe the back of my hand off a minute. So that could be drying. I've got this Tarte blush that I've had for some time that I'm in the middle of panning. And because it's so old, it's dried up. So trying to get any colour off of it onto your brush is actually quite difficult. So I use the same technique with this as I do when I have hard pan and that is I get a clean spoolie and just very gently rub over the surface. With the blush what that does is it gives me loose pigment to pick up on my brush and use and if I show you with, if I put that over there, hopefully it will demo very lightly scratch over the surface where the hard pan is and initially what you get left with is a lot of powder on top that's great because you can get your brush and you can just pick that powder up and apply it and then you can just close the lid again for the next time you want to use it or because I'm demoing today just blow that off the top there you can see it's completely removed the hard pan so I can now go into this and pick up highlight again so both ways use about the same amount of um, product in terms of wastage the difference being if you do it my way with the clean spoolie you end up with the pigment loose on the top which then means if you don't use it all you can close it keep it flat it's going to be there next time you go in so you're not actually wasting any of that pigment because next time you go in 
or that loose pigment is still going to be sitting there waiting for you to use. The tape method does work, but you end up wasting the pigment that's on the tape that you're throwing away. By using a clean spoolie, and you can pick a bag of these up. I picked a bag of 50 of these up from Amazon, I think, for about three quid. Or, when you've got to the end of one of your mascaras, save the wand, give it a damn good clean, make sure it's absolutely squeaky clean, and you can use it for that. So, and of course the other benefit of using the spoolie, not only are you not wasting product, but if you've got product that has got old, but still smells okay, powder product wise, but you just can't physically get it onto the brush anymore, you can use this and just very lightly scratch over the top and then you've got pigment that you can pick up on your blush brush tap back off into there so you're still saving the product and you can use up your dried up products as well so whether you've got a dried up powder that you want to continue using or something that's hard panned I would absolutely recommend the spoolie method rather than the tape method because you are not wasting any of the pigment which if you use the tape method you're throwing away the top layer I know it's only minuscule, but why waste product if you don't need to? So, that's my helpful little tip of the day. Do you know what? I just feel the need for a A little bit more shine. So there's my tip for dealing with hard pan because once you know what causes it, fixing it, well, that's the easy part. I hope that has proven helpful for you. If you're one of my regular babies, please double check you're still subscribed. People are still being unsubscribed, but sneakily, my films are still appearing in your news feed, so you're not necessarily realising you've been chopped from the 4F family. And I hate losing any of you. So, yeah, please double check. If you found this helpful, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down and tell me why you didn't find it helpful. And uh, leave me a comment on whether this has helped you fix products in your own collection. The only thing you will find though, as a as word of warning, once the Jeffrey highlights go to hard pan, they will continue to go to hard pan. It, it's almost like it triggers it within it. But as I said, quick wipe over with a spoolie. And it's normally fine for a couple of months before you have to re it again. Depending on how often you use it, obviously, and how much of your body you cover with it. That, my darlings, is down to you. If you're new here, hi, hello, welcome. This has been one of my little mini tutorials. Um, I have filmed this particular look. If I remember, I will link it in the description box below. If not, give me a nudge and I will pin it as a comment or something. If you found this helpful and if you've enjoyed the slight madness that is me and this channel 
It'd be awesome if you would like to join the 4F family too. We are the nicest family on YouTube. Super easy to do. That subscribe button down there that currently matches my lipstick. Give that a bit of a prod. It goes to grey. And then you can ring the little bell next time. And when YouTube says, do you want notifications? Yes. Are you sure you want notifications? Yes. Do you want just some notifications or no notifications? No, I want all of the notifications. And then they might tell you one in four of my films that go up, if you're lucky. But, talking of my films, there are an awful lot of others you can watch, not just this particular eye look. Uh, there's challenges, there's palette reviews, there are tag films. There's a lot. There's, there's, there's a lot. So basically, pick a playlist. Grab a drink. I finally found a full sugar cherry coke in the UK. It's so difficult to find, they normally sell it in diet. Makes me very happy. Because I can't drink the diet one because the aspartame reacts with my meds. That's a completely different story. So, grab a drink. Grab a snack. Put your feet up. And indulge. And now, my darlings, before my mind wanders off on 16 other directions, all that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.